everyone, it's Alice and I am back with a chaotic Sewing with Alice video. Although this is probably going to be a bit of a series and I'm going to break this down a lot more than I have my previous makes because um, I am doing a pattern challenge with a Facebook group called the Steamstress Squadron. They're a lovely bunch of sewists, creators and imaginative people and they've got a pattern challenge they do one every year for an event called Asylum which is uh, the big steampunk festival in Lincoln and they all get together and show off their makes and it's fantastic because everybody makes it completely different some people really tweak stuff some people use really unusual fabrics it's just interesting to see how everybody interprets patterns so I'm actually going to break this video down a lot more because I'm going to be helping that group um, hopefully make these outfits up so there's going to be quite a few of these videos um hopefully in like short form to walk you through what we're doing first off i'm going to tell you what the costume is that i'm making with their selected patterns now like a lot of people over christmas i went to the cinema for a christmas movie and i chose wonka absolutely loved it it was so colorful it was so joyful it just felt happy i loved the music loved the costumes i just loved the vibe and i thought you know what a steampunk wonka would be a really fun idea. So I've decided to do a steampunk wonka and it completely fit perfectly with the patterns that the Steamstress Squadron had chosen. So I was like, why not hit two birds with one stone and I'll do the pattern challenge as well. And of course now I'm gonna be making these videos to try and help you all along. So if you are wanting to make the black snail patterns fan skirt from 1890, which is pattern 0414, or if you are going to do the black snail patterns 1890s ladies fest, which is pattern 0220, these videos will hopefully be super helpful for you. So I have bought my fabrics, at least I've bought most of them. I have my lovely fabric for my skirt, which is similar to his trouser fabric, but I can't afford screen accurate, so we're not doing screen accurate, we're just doing an impression of, which is this lovely striped linen. This is gonna be a skirt instead of trousers, because I wanna go skirt for trousers to use the um, black snail pattern. I have this fabulously gorgeous fabric to do his waistcoat. His waistcoat's kind of weird though, because it kind of looks like a grandpa jumper slash waistcoat. Um, it does technically have sleeves, so I've got like a sample fabric. I do quite like this one for the sleeves, but I haven't decided if I'm gonna give it sleeves or if I'm just gonna do the pattern straight as is. And then of course his iconic burgundy coat. I have this gorgeous wine cotton velvet in here. I'm pretty sure it's not silk velvet because it doesn't move like silk velvet and it looks kind of tatty it looks like cotton velvet to me i'm going with cotton velvet i am not pulling this out because there will be fuzz everywhere in fact there's already fuzz on my linen and it's not even out of the packet yet so that's going to live in there for now i've got these cute buttons for the waistcoat too these little buttons are from uh antique and vintage flea market just the other day like 60p can't go wrong 60p for some nice colourful buttons. So that's what my project is going to be um, and that's what I'm going to be using to make the waistcoat and the skirt. And these are the two patterns that I'm going to be walking you through the most. Um, I will do the jacket as like a separate thing um, but that's I'm not going to do that first because I want to try and help the people in Steamstress Squadron deal with this and give them as much time as possible to do their makes um, and give them something to follow along with. So the first thing that I am going to make is I'm going to go with the skirt because I think a skirt is a really good place to start. Um, I'm aware that quite a few people have said in the Steamstress Squadron that they've never made anything before or they've only made really small, simple things. So I think as a basic start, the skirt would be a great place to start off with um, for people that have never really sewn before and just to like ease them into it. So this black snail pattern, the first thing I am going to say about this is this caught me out and I believe this is true on all of the black snail patterns but do check the information. So the reason why this caught me out is because on the page that's titled, it's like size chart misses, so that's size chart misses on this page. It says something that really caught me out. I didn't notice it and I cut my pattern out because 
I've done these like print at home patterns so many times before, I assumed it would be the same. It is not, do not make the same mistake. I think it was Alice Pruden pointed this out and I'm really grateful she did because otherwise I wouldn't have noticed. So unusually, black snail patterns assumes that you are going to be wearing a corset with a one and a half inch waist reduction. So that means their size chart is sized to the corseted size, not the actual body size. That threw me for A6 because normally the size charts are your natural body size. And then if you're wearing a corset, you measure yourself in the corset and make it to fit that. No, Black Snail has assumed you will be wearing a corset and the size chart is therefore one and a half inches too small. It's not very helpful. <laughs> It's definitely not how I would have chosen to put out a size chart. I find it very confusing. Make sure you read it, make sure you double check um, and absolutely make a mock-up of this because this could go slightly wrong on your sizing. Uh, I definitely cut it out wrong. I've cut it out a size too small for me because I'm not wearing a corset for this outfit. I think Wonka's very loosey-goosey, so I wanna be kind of loosey-goosey with it. I don't need to wear a corset with it. If you are wearing a corset, double check this was like this is like the root of where all your things will go wrong on this pattern I feel so that really threw me double check the size chart read it through they've assumed you're reducing by one and a half inches and you may not be or you might be reducing more than that please double check that size chart before you do the pattern so for those of you that have never printed out a pattern before um, they are relatively simple really just make sure that you've got the scaling correct before you hit print they generally give you like um, a little four inch square so print the square out first measure it if that's correct just print the whole thing you'll be absolutely fine um, you'll just get like bits actually because I've not cut this one out you'll be able to see so you just get a pile of stuff that looks like this and they're really helpfully numbered one two, three, four, five. And you just want to lay them out, literally just lay it out, one, two, three, four, and you can match up these sections here. Okay, so you're gonna match them up, and then when you match these pits up here, and on the line, one, two, match them up. You can just tape it together, um, and you will slowly see your pattern come together. Honestly, it looks kind of like a jigsaw. It's like doing a paper jigsaw is how I think of it. It's quite fun. When it's done, it will look something like this. So that's it all done and cut out. So you can see that the little Vs have now become little Xs, and that the lines have all matched and met up. This is what it's going to look like when you finish it. I'm also now going to tell you something else that threw me on this pattern that I've also never before seen on any print at home patterns that I've ever done. This is quite an adventure black snail patterns. So this is the back piece of your skirt. You might notice something. It's kind of a mini skirt right now. So to save, to save paper, she's only giving you the top half of the skirt, which for me, I think that's great because it means the pattern folds up easier. I don't have a load of paper that I need to waste because I can figure it out from there. However, if you've never done this before, this might be quite confusing to you because you're like, well, where's the rest of the pattern? How do I figure it out? She has been really kind. She's given you lots of lines here, lots of lines that you're just gonna follow. You're just gonna get like a ruler or something, tape measure out and literally just follow what it says, add 23 and a half inches onto the bottom of there and that will give you the exact match to the front piece of the skirt and that will give you the basic generic size. If you're shorter, you'll need to shorten it by a few inches. If you're taller, you might want it longer. That's entirely up to you. There's also options for trains, making it longer at the back, shorter at the front. I'm not gonna do any of that. I am literally gonna do it as a, like a straight hem at the bottom. Um, so it will be the same measurement all the way around. And that's the version that I will be showing you. Um, I think that's it on the patterns that threw me. So don't be worried if you put this together and you go, where's the rest of the skirt? Um, you figure it out yourself. I will show you how to do that now. Here we go. Okay, so 
we're about to do business so that means the hair has to go up because the uh, pattern cutting process serious business unfortunately i have stripes so i gotta match stripes so i guess i'll be showing you how to match stripes as well if your fabric is just plain like a solid color or it doesn't matter if your pattern match you don't need to follow that um helpfully this pattern does come with a layout on this page i'm not sure which page it is but um this shows you how to lay your fabric out if you've got normal fabric how to lay it out if it's stripey um, and how to lay it out if you've got a train. So depending which one you're doing, make sure you have a look at this to have a look how you want to lay the pattern out onto your fabric. Um, I'm going to be doing the stripey fabric one here. So um, I'll be showing you how to do stripes. So just a slight interjection. Uh, you may notice I'm in a different outfit. It's a different day. I'm editing the video, which is when I discovered everything from here on has my head cut off. Uh, and I can't reshoot it because I've already cut the fabric. So I'm afraid you're going to have to deal with the fact that you can't see my face. I mean, you don't need to see my face anyway. I'm showing you the pattern. But just so that you know, headless uh, from here on. I'm going to show you how to cut out the front panel first. We're going to start with this piece. The number is here on the pattern. Don't get confused with these. These are not your pattern numbers. That's your page numbers. There. And also, please take note that it says cut on the fold of the fabric. So we want to be cutting here and this is a grain line so a grain line hopefully you can kind of see this these stripes really help because my grain line is where the stripes are but if you have a plain fabric you'll see when you pull it that way it's kind of stretchy it kind of stretches that way and that way that's called the bias but the grain line is the actual grain of the fabric so as you can see it doesn't it doesn't really stretch anywhere near as much going that way so that's your grain line is the bit that doesn't stretch on that's generally straight down and straight across so this is cut on the fold so it's very simple we just fold the fabric and lay this on with this section on the fold and then cut it out from there but don't cut your fold because you need that you need that to open it out so because this fabric is stripey i'm going to use the stripes for my fold so I'm going to approximately guess kind of where I want that to start with, maybe. And I'm going to use one of the stripes that, that goes all the way down and just make sure that that stripe is in the same place. But also, you might find some stripes are wonky on your fabric. So have fun with that. This is the fiddly faffy bit, but I promise if you fiddle and faff with this part, the result will be satisfying. So I folded it down there, so then it will sit on there. But I don't want to waste fabric, so I can actually pull that over by one more stripe. So if you want to do that, just get a hold of the top layer. Get hold of the top layer. And then just like jiggle it forwards. Posture is really great for my back, I find, um, as a goblin. It really just enhances my goblin shape. So also what I want to make sure that is happening, because I have stripes, <laughs> and you don't need to do this on solid fabric, is I want to make sure that these stripes here are matching. So like that stripe wants to match there, that stripe wants to match there. So just keep faffing around and just like moving. I'll show you a good way to move fabric. Hopefully you can see. But if you get a hold of it and just do that gently on the top layer, it moves it just a tiny little bit. Where you like it, just weight it down with some pattern weights. You don't have to use pattern weights if you don't have pattern weights. Just anything that's heavy. So we've got our pattern weights on there. All the way down but you can see that when it is flat it matches in the stripes and that goes all the way down Gadgy, what are you doing in the video you're not gonna help and then again when you're down here you just lift it up you can fold this part of the fabric back just to see where those lines are but as you can see they match perfectly so that's nice and neat 
everything's flat under there. So then you can go ahead and um, cut your fabric. This front piece will be the easiest piece for you to do because the next ones have to match the stripes you have on the side. If you have plain fabric at this point, you can just put this aside and cut out your next pieces. If like me, you're using stripes, why do I do this to myself? You are gonna need to hang on to these pieces because now it gets fun. And when I say fun, I mean, uh, we now have to match all of the other pattern pieces that we're about to cut out with these specific stripes down here to get a nice pattern match. I'm gonna show you how I match them. Um, and there are many ways. Uh, I don't even know if this is the correct way. I just did this. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> here we go. I've just spotted something else in the pattern on this. I did wonder why there seemed to be four versions of number two on here, but only two versions of two on this section. So the normal fabric, you can use this piece, this top of the back skirt panel as it is. However, if you have a train or stripe fabric, you have to divide the pattern piece along this line for skirt with train, but also apparently according to this, if you're using stripes. So that means I actually need to cut down there. So that line that says divide, you wanna cut that open basically. So these are gonna become two pattern pieces instead of one. And I should imagine that is because otherwise you, your stripes are gonna be straight here. Um, and then they're gonna look really horizontal at the back, which is gonna look and hang oddly. Whereas we can make them into cool chevrons if we cut that. One piece has now become two pieces. Um, it makes for a lot more pattern matching than I was expecting, but I understand why they've done it. Uh, and you will get to see the final result will make a lot more sense now. So I'm gonna start with the side piece. The piece that says center back is gonna be at the back but I'm gonna to need to match this piece to that piece. So I'm gonna to wanna to do this one, which is now the side first. This is getting confusing. I'm confused. If this is your first time and you do have questions, do let me know, I will try to answer them. And I can even do like videos and stuff to help you if you need that. I'm like, I need a video to help me, to be honest. So good luck. <laughs> I'll show you up close now what we have here. The light's very shiny. So I've got my trusty yardstick out. Here's the pattern. I figured out this is the side back piece. So this is the side front, which is going to connect to this piece, which I just cut out. So the side back, we figured out to where I want it. And I want it down to that 38 down here. So I can just get that in off that square that, where we cut out the other piece of fabric to conserve as much fabric as possible. And then on this side, this is how I do pattern matches. So I've laid out my pattern piece and then I get the piece that I've cut out that I want it to match to. And as you can see, this barely looks like a line break here. Barely looks like a line break. So I just try to match it up as best as possible. And as you can see, right underneath it is exactly where my pattern is lying. So I'm gonna follow this line all the way down to the bottom of my, my 38 inch long skirt. So that's the original pattern. I lay the front piece still folded. These are the edges that will be sewn to this edge. So this edge will be sewn to this edge where it is. So that means that this needs to match under here. And I've just pinned this bit down here so that I can show you what I mean. Because when I pull this back, can you see that? Just here, we're getting this chevron effect that's coming out of this line. So when these are sewn together, they will chevron really nicely 
down here. And that's how we get a stripe match with chevrons. For the bottom hem, I've marked my 38 inches, which is where I want the bottom of my skirt to be with a pin. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut down this line from here all the way down to where my pin line is. So what I'm gonna do once I've cut this section out as I'm just gonna cut it down to a line to this point here. And then I'm gonna move my yardstick and lay it all the way down there to the 38 inches. And then I'm gonna join, use my pins and like join them together. Cause I don't do perfection. This is chaos sewing. So I do a lot of my stuff by eye. It mostly turns out okay. You know, who's gonna come at you with a measuring stick and go, that's quarter of an inch out. Apparently some people do, but I'm not one of them and I don't care. So you do it however you wanna do it. You can do it with some string. You can get string like how you do a big circle with string. You can do it that way if you want. I just do it by eye and hope for the best. Also, just remember, I'm cutting mine very slightly bigger because if you remember I said at the start that uh, I accidentally cut this too small. So I'm just adding like not quite a centimeter to my seams so I can regain my one and a half inches because I'm not wearing a corset but you want to cut yours exactly on the line. <laughs> as long as you did the measurements right at the start. So I've moved my yardstick because I've got my nice cut line here to where my pin is. Um, and I'm gonna pop a pin into that piece as well, just down there, so that I know how long that has to be. And then you just kind of estimate it. Like you just do your best. I'm just gonna blindly cut my fabric. And what happens, happens. Welcome to chaos sewing. None of that fancy, fancy ASMR, sexy cutting here. No, we just hack at it and um, hope for the best. So the good news is, now that you've cut this piece out, you can use this as your template instead of the paper because the stripe match is exactly the same on the other side of your front panel piece. So just lay, the, lay it down, make sure all the stripes are exactly the same and um, you can just cut that one straight out and you're good to go. So basically, once you've cut one piece out matching those stripes up, just use that exact same technique for each one of your seams. And then when you get to the centre back seam, they'll match anyway because you're you're cutting out the exact same panel pieces together so they should match as long as you line those stripes up you will be good to go if you want vertical stripes and not chevrons all the way around this is not that tutorial i'm sure there'll be a tutorial somewhere on youtube if you look up how to pattern match straight stripes i didn't want them that's no good and i'm now waffling because it is oh wow it has just turned midnight i don't know if you can see that probably not but it's just turned to midnight. I am a little tired. I think that's pretty much it for part one of this pattern. So yeah, you should, by the end of this, um, know how to at least cut out your pattern. Uh, cut out all of your pattern pieces. On the waistband, you can decide whether you want to pattern match stripes to the front piece, or if you want to do what I'm going to do, swap the stripes around so that the stripes are going horizontal rather than vertically, and then you don't have to match them. And then it just looks kind of nice because it breaks it all up a little bit more. I think that's everything. So that's part one of the Black Snail fan skirt complete. So the next video I release will be putting all of your pattern pieces together and actually sewing the skirt. So this is probably going to be a two-parter um, video. So I hope you all had fun. I hope you all learned how to cut out your pattern pieces and you feel more confident to do it now. 
If you do have any questions, um, stick them in the comment section or just like drop me a private message and ask, what on earth does this mean? How do I do this? I'm happy to answer questions. I'm happy to take photos for you to show you what I mean or just do little short videos as well. Like I can do a quick TikTok of how to do different techniques if you need any questions answering. So yeah, um, that's it for this one. Check out my other social media. Um, I'm on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, all of the usual places. Uh, do check those out and there will be more videos coming soon. And once we've tackled the skirt, I will move on to the waistcoat for you. See you soon.